Well over 12 months ago, long before Far Cry 6 was even announced, I put up a video talking about 10 things I wanted to see from the next Far Cry map editor. Now at the time of recording this video, Far Cry 6 has indeed been announced, but there is no word on the map editor side of the game. But as discussed in a previous video, I do remain hopeful that it will feature the fan favorite mode. And today I wanna to turn my attention to what the community want to see from the next map editor. So today, in what is likely going to be my most unscripted video yet on the channel, I'm simply going to go through our Discord server and the Far Cry 6 editor wishlist channel and see what you guys have been discussing and what features and different assets you guys want to see in the next Far Cry editor and also just share my own thoughts here and there as I see fit. Now if you want to join the discussion, there will be a link to our Discord server in the description below, but let's jump into it. So the very first suggestion we have here is an asset saver where you can make a group of assets, select them and save it as its own single custom asset. Now this is a huge one in my opinion. I really like this suggestion. Far Cry obviously has thousands and thousands of assets, but it always is going to have gaps depending on what you're trying to make. Let's say tanks, for example, there are no tanks in the Far Cry 5 map editor, but there's many maps out there that do have creators that want to feature tanks. So fortunately, people have the talent to make these things from scratch, but you can only really use those creations in the map you're currently working on. If you want to put that tank on another map, you pretty much have to make it from scratch all over again. It is extremely tedious and extremely frustrating. So what if we could make our own custom asset, such as a tank, group it all together and name it as just a single asset that you can add to your Far Cry asset library and then put in any map you like. We could even go a bit further with that idea and create some sort of community library like the Steam Workshop or the Frontier Workshop, which I've been loving in the Planet Coaster game. That way we can not only save our own assets for future use, but if we choose to do so, share it with the wider community as well, which I think would add a, a really good element to the community because map editing can be quite a lonely experience. And while I hope that we will eventually have full blown co-op map editing like Halo's Forge, a asset server or workshop of some sorts would be an amazing middle ground that I think is quite achievable, especially when you consider uh, Frontier have done it recently with Planet Coaster, even on console. So that's a great suggestion. I really like that one. Another good suggestion comes from Eric, who talks about customizable AI loadouts. Now, this is a huge one. So many people have been sharing their frustration on this one in the comment section of my videos. You can place down heaps of different NPCs but they pretty much all use one of four or five weapons. It's either a shotgun, an assault rifle, uh, an RPG or something along those lines. And it just uh, causes issues. Obviously there's a lack of gameplay variety there because you're just versing what is essentially a reskinned version of the same enemy over and over again. Uh, but there's also a sort of immersive perspective as well, especially if you're trying to create some sort of historically accurate scene or map. Obviously people using modern assault rifles, for example, isn't really gonna fit with, uh, with the theme you're trying to create. So just the ability to customize AI loadouts would be a huge thing, not only from a gameplay perspective, but also making maps more immersive than ever before. So that's a good one as well. And one that's been very popular from my perspective. Next up, we have one from Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves himself, talking about snap mode for consoles. This is a big one. Now, for those of you on PC, if you did not know, we do have rotational snapping on console where we can flip things by 90 degrees for, uh, for quick angles and movement. And if you don't know how to do that, check out my 10 tips video you may not know about the Far Cry map editor. But what we don't have in the world of snapping is the ability to snap items together. Let's say walls or fence lines. You have to line them up manually. Of course, we have the coordinates tool, but it's tedious, it's slow, it's prone to errors. Just the ability to snap things together that should snap together would be amazing. A system like Halo's uh, magnet system in Forge, I think would be absolutely fantastic where you can choose the aggressiveness of the snap so it's not overpowering. But yeah, snap mode for consoles, huge one. I fully support that idea. 
The next one here is from Toaster Weevil, who says, for the devs to actually add all of the assets from the game and DLC to the editor, I was so annoyed that we never got the crocodiles and panthers from the Vietnam DLC, the flying aliens from the Mars DLC, or the zombie cougar from the zombies DLC. So much map potential in just those few new creatures alone. Now, I think the devs did a pretty good job of porting most things over from campaign, but there's definitely gaps. And I think Toaster Weevil has highlighted uh, Quite a few of the ones which uh, stand out here. Especially for me, crocodiles not having those in the map editor even though they're in the Vietnam DLC. That's a big one because we have no aquatic threats uh, in the waters of the map editor. And it just means that players always know they're safe if they go into the water but being able to put something dangerous in those waters in our maps would just keep players on their toes and some of the funniest and uh, most memorable moments I've had with friends uh, in the Far Cry franchise was interacting with the wilderness and being able to make that wilderness come alive in our own maps I think would be a, uh, a huge thing. So obviously bringing over all the assets and creatures that we see in the campaign is a huge, uh, would be a huge benefit. Another suggestion we have here is talking about taking our Far Cry 5 maps and putting them into Far Cry 6, so almost like a, a cross-play feature. Uh, this is an interesting one, actually. I don't think it's ever featured in any of the Far Cry games to date, but given that I believe Far Cry 5 and Far Cry 6 are going to run on the same engine, don't quote me on that, it's hard to see why it wouldn't be possible, especially if they're going to bring over all the assets from Far Cry 5 and build upon them. Uh, but yeah, it would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, although I am planning to recreate some of my own maps in Far Cry 6, so if they do bring that over, I might have a bit of conflict in terms of what I want to create. But an interesting suggestion there. Then we have one from Steve64B who's talking about password protecting maps to prevent others from republishing and plagiarizing them. Steve4B obviously a uh, huge, huge figure in the map editing community. Uh, and this is a good suggestion, one that I haven't really thought of myself before, but there has been a bit of an issue with map stealing and uh, plagiarizing in the Far Cry 5 map editor. It's not super easy to do, but it's certainly possible with a few workarounds and obviously it uh, introduces a bit of toxicity into the community. So being able to protect our work, even though you're always gonna have a little bit of risk when you put anything creative out there, I think a few extra features like this would certainly be welcomed. Then we have one which clearly hit a nerve with the community here uh, by Meme Weaver, which is the only major thing I want and hope for Far Cry 6 is removing that damn clipping error message. This one has been rather interesting. One of the first videos I actually put up on the, uh, on the YouTube channel with Far Cry here was talking about actually solving that clipping error. Uh, and it's it, to this day, people are still viewing that video and commenting on it. So clearly it's an error message that a lot of people are frustrated with. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually find the source, the specific asset that's causing the clipping issue by clicking on that error message. Uh, but nevertheless, it is quite frustrating or at the very least, tell players how to solve those problems rather than just say they exist. I think that's a very good suggestion. We've got another suggestion here from Samuel who talks about uh, adding more non-moving cars. Now this is a big one actually. It's only something I discovered when I've been working on my urban maps, but pretty much all of the cars, unless they're drivable, are destroyed. They're heavily damaged and it's really annoying because if you're trying to make sort of a relatively realistic city environment, which we have plenty of assets to do, uh, the actual vehicles themselves really break that immersion because they all look pretty much destroyed. Of course, you can put the drivable versions in, which aren't really destroyed, but then you encounter the issue of a limit. I think you can only have eight or so on console. So yeah, having more to choose from. Uh, and one idea I've always had is have the same car, but then almost have a skin variant where you can choose either destroyed or, uh, you know, pristine. I think that would be a really good solution as well. So hopefully we do get some more, uh, more vehicles, which would look at home in a modern and clean city environment. Then we have Mac All Live coming in with a huge one, which is scripting in multiplayer modes. Now, I don't know what the situation is on PC, but I know that on console, we cannot do scripting in multiplayer modes, PVP. This would be amazing. Just think about the potential if we had maps which 
players could interact with and uh, evolved as the game went on. I often think back to Halo 3 custom games where you would play zombie maps with different doors opening at different times. It was so incredibly amazing and it would just make every map feel that bit more unique. Now I get why this wasn't done in Far Cry 5. I can, I can already see the source of connection issues and performance issues by having a lot of scripting going on. But I think it's worth it. If uh, if they incorporated this into Far Cry 6, yes, I can foresee some issues with it, but I think the trade-off would be worth it because the creators who do it carefully and test their maps and make sure everything works as intended, I think can introduce some really fun scripting, hopefully without hurting the, uh, hurting the performance of the game too much. That would be so incredibly amazing and I think introduce a whole new layer of sandbox to the multiplayer. Then we have a suggestion here talking about the AI, uh, just being able to parachute, grab other weapons, stay in cars, or just be a bit smarter in general. Now, the discussion moving down from here does talk about the fact you can do most of these things in the Far Cry 5 map editor. I think the core theme here though, is that it's not very intuitive and you often have to work around to get the AIs to do exactly what you want them to do. So I think definitely making the AIs a lot more uh, feature feature rich and just making them easier to work with would be a huge uh, improvement to the Far Cry 6 uh, map editor, especially when it comes to vehicles. It would be good if you could set like uh, parameters for the AI, such as never leave this vehicle or uh, different things like that will give them a route to patrol. Something along those lines I think would be really, really good. Just making it a bit more accessible for players to, uh, to execute the vision they have for their map. And let's finish up with one more from Toaster Weevil saying, I'd like to see some scripting additions in terms of writing and lettering. Being able to actually write objectives for players in quests or leave actual written notes would be a huge plus for open world star maps. I can so get behind this and it's frustrating because one of the Vietnam assets actually has a note which you can interact with, uh, but you can't actually edit, at least on console. Um, I think this would be a huge thing, being able to create our own stories in the game itself. Currently the best thing we can do is put sort of big galling text in the map itself. And you can do things with scripting to make it appear and disappear, but it's it breaks the immersion. I think interacting with notes and things like that would be absolutely amazing. And going further on from sort of using this as a platform to move into other discussion, I personally would really like to see a description added to maps as well. It was something they had all the way back in Far Cry 2, but something like that would also add a huge amount of immersion and sort of set the scene for what the players are about to experience. So there you go, that's our first episode of discussing your ideas for the Far Cry 6 map editor. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it on screen, but I'm only a quarter of the way through this particular channel on our Discord. So please do let me know if you want me to do future videos just like this, this more relaxed style talking about dreams and goals and hopes for the future of the Far Cry map editor. And if you want to join the discussion, please do check out the Discord link in the description below. Just make sure you have a look through our rules as we do run a pretty tight ship on this Discord server. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I cannot wait to discuss more Far Cry 6 map editor ideas very soon. Hey everyone, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as those simple actions have a huge positive impact on a small channel like mine. Be sure to check out our Xbox Club in the description below and on the screen right now you can see some of my other videos that I think you will really enjoy. Cheers!